CP3, God bless him, is trying to give us something to talk about uh, with that whole incident. But I don't, I don't know. Basketball wise, I don't know what to make of these two teams. Which, uh, what? Well, let's get into it. What incident is that? Well, I mean, I obviously uh, we saw the tweet after the game, and we're like, huh? Why is the guy who used to be the head of the players union basically <laughs> saying like? Screw the fans! If they get to be jerks, so do we. And that I mean, was sort he of dropped puzzling. an f bomb. He didn't yeah. say screw. He dropped that f bomb right there for everyone to see. And so that was puzzling until the video came out of a young man, uh, prob- probably a teenager. I don't think I we know exactly so. how old. Yeah, young guy uh, who was involved allegedly in an incident with Chris Paul's whole family. His mom, <laughs> probably an older woman. Uh, his I wife hope. and his kids were around. Apparently, he put his hands on them. That's not allowed. But we don't know what led to that. We don't know anything about it. And then you see CP3 in a crowd of people involving players yell over to this kid, <laughs> I'll see you later. Pretty yeah, he ominous. Was, he was adamant about it, too. Oh, I'll, I'll find you. I'll see you. I was yeah. like, he, he does know he's 15, right? Like, he's like, if. I have no idea. But see, here's where it gets tricky. Because, again, we don't know anything of what happened now if hands were in fact put on someone especially someone's mother then sure the i under i understand completely like if somebody touched my mom i would probably go ballistic but we don't know anything and that's what's a little bit tricky for me on this one i also think i look i've not been quiet about my disdain for one chris paul um I think he's a dirty player and I think he's a flopping player and I think he's a whining player and he complains about everything. And so when I find out that it's him and his family, I'm like, oh, it's like the perfect storm. I don't even know what I don't know what to say about it. It's a large group of people. So I don't know that it was just a a simple case of like this child did something. uh, It almost feels like, hey, this is Chris Paul's family when they're surrounded by Mavericks fans. That's just a a recipe for disaster anyways. But I'll be curious to see what happens. I mean, you know, if you're the kid's mom, that's that's an embarrassing situation. I have to escort my kid out of here because he did something stupid and we're going to be ostracized. But yeah, I don't know. Paige, did you have an immediate reaction? Because I feel like people immediately like felt very strongly about this and it was a little bit odd to watch. My reaction was more about like what <laughs> what is happening with fans. Yeah. I truly like I mean <clears throat> maybe not the Will Smith kind thing, of, but yeah. kind of in the same vein, but like the guy tackling Chappelle, this situation just seems like there's a lot of this cropping up. Um I wonder if it's something to do with this feeling of the last two plus years <laughs> of like everyone being limited in what they can do and now we've been set free yeah. and now we're all insane. Anyway, just like, what are you doing? You can, I don't care if you're 50. Do you think it's, I, so let me ask you. It's also the beginning of hot time, right? It's hot. Uh, Texas was had historically hot this hot weekend to the point where like I found myself road raging as well. So I, I, I kind of understand the like, mm-hmm. but I also think, do we think that the amount of social media use is, you know, people say the most horrific like I something happened to Instagram this weekend right so there I used to have it set up where I wouldn't even see message requests like DMs or whatever it, it just automatically would just block everyone out and be like no unless unless I follow you whatever I'm not going to see it and all of a sudden they popped up this weekend I could see them so these were messages from like 160 200 weeks ago whatever it was and they were awful it was when I went off on Kawhi Leonard and it was just fuck you Canada hate you hope you die and I'm like oh I, yes I remember these times these were fun times and these are the types of things that people say on a daily basis on social media and do we think sometimes our inside social media voice Voices are now carrying over into our when we actually go out in public and now we're acting out on it. And I'm, I'm by the way, I'm using we extremely loosely here. <laughs> like I'm really talking about idiots, but mm-hmm. maybe it's that it's like this. I've said all these horrible things to whoever. And now I find myself face to face with his family. And I, I just lost control for a second. I don't know. There's got to be. I'm not a psychologist. This has to be a field day. I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because we have this unprecedented, in recent times, Mm -hmm. access to these athletes, right? Draymond is recording his podcast (laughs) after his pressers. like, And so what happens is fans feel like they know these athletes. They have these like parasocial relationships where they feel in some ways entitled to a response, a reaction, and that they can give their feedback. 
And I think you're right that like then you're confronted with this and you have this very one sided relationship. I'd be curious if you feel this way with how people speak to you as well. But like, that's crazy. Like, that's people, weird. Wake up, people. But you're also putting people, yourself in harm's way. We don't like, we're moving past have words. That. Like you mentioned it, the Chappelle guy, this guy, like yeah, this is, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's the beginning of the end. Like, you know how when they watch a zombie movie, it's like a slow transformation, like a couple people in town start to get <laughs> eaten from the inside out and they become, they act weird and then all of a sudden there's, a, maybe this is the beginning of that. I mean, I'm not against it, to be honest with you. It's, I think we've had a good run, but yeah. I don't know, Gabe Seals feels like up. he's very pensive about it. Well, I just feel weird about the whole thing because I agree with just about all of what you're saying. And I'm wondering if we're we're going to reach a tipping point where fans do realize, like, no, when you go run up to the octagon and try to make a video out of it, the, first of all, that's the last place on the earth on Earth you want to go right? and try to like scare someone. I mean, I almost kind of respect fighting. it. I'll be honest, like of all you. places to go, <laughs> that's not it. So when a when a bodyguard tosses you out and basically saves your life just by throwing you down instead Fair. of letting you actually get in there and confront someone. Oh, maybe you learn something when you yeah, when you jump on stage at Chappelle and like people beat you badly, badly and and they don't and they aren't going to face criminal charges for beating you badly because <laughs> you are the one invading or when this young man Let's assume the worst in this guy, Let, which do, maybe yeah. isn't fair. But let's assume he did everything Chris Paul thinks he did and more. Like if he shoved like, his mom, let's say that, right? Yeah. That's awful. Like, of course. And so you're going to get, you're going to pay consequences for that. And so I just wonder when it, people do start to realize it. Because on Twitch and on Instagram and on Twitter, you can say all that stuff that you want. It does. What's the worst thing that happens? You get blocked? Yeah. Like, worth, uh, you yeah. don't get punched in the face on Twitter. No. But I would, I, you know what? I will mm -hmm. devil's advocate you right now. I don't think I was a devil's advocating. Wait, well, I, I was the devil. <laughs> so I'm. So what do I do? I'm double oh, devil, double devil devils. advocating. Like <laughs> I would I say know. this: you're speaking from a, a like a sane thinking person who sort of looks at consequences and punishments as uh, okay. I'm done. I won't do it again. I, I learned my lesson. Whereas I don't think that's what we have now in society. I think any and all publicity any and all exposure is now considered a prize like some sort of reward so i don't know about this teenage whatever the hell he is i'm sure but that's the thing for all i know he goes to school today and he's like uh, i'm that guy like whatever or the the girl that tried to get in the octagon like maybe that's now she's considered awesome good bad or ugly i i don't know that these are people that learn from these things i think this is all part of the chase yeah, that's a good point. Death. What's the end game? Death. Well, Charles Barkley said it. You... He goes, oh, I've always said, <laughs> put him at midcourt, five minutes, and then I get to like beat him five up, but I'll take my time. And then I'm, I'm not going to throw haymakers right off the top. I'm going to wait till the end of the five minute ring. And I was like, you know, Kenny Smith tried to bring him back down. But honestly, I thought it was kind of funny. And I, it's, I don't know what the end game is. Maybe televised athletes beating up fans. Maybe that's we start paying for that. Pay-per-views. Well, so then let me ask you this to bring it back to CP3 just... for a second. So his reaction, again, we mm -hmm. don't have the full story, but it it seemed pretty threatening and pretty weird uh, for him to say, like, I'll see you later. Basically, like, right. I'm going to come get you. Right. I, and, you know, I don't think we have to take that serious. I, I think there's a bit of hyperbole in that. I'm not accusing CP3 of chasing him down. <laughs> But then, like, what is the responsible thing for him to do? Because I would imagine a lot of players feel like there's there's no safe way. There's no due process. Like, these guys get to say whatever they want, right. even literally put their hands on our family or throw stuff at us. What do we get to do in response? And I don't know the answer. That's the th Well, A, this is, why, this is why these guys have personal bodyguards on top of team bodyguards. Like, a lot of times, the bigger names especially will have their own detail. Um I think, in, again, this is such a weird situation because the timing of it was such that do I don't even know that Chris Paul necessarily knows what was happening. I think he was just sort of in the melee told, hey, it's your family. Some crap went down. but And that's all he knew. And of course, you're going to be like, what's my family? So now I'm going to react. Zero blame for that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's the video is jarring because we have the benefit of seeing the person he's addressing. And we have the time to go uh is that a teenager like this is very awkward i don't know that he saw any of that i have no idea or maybe he thought it was the who knows but it's just i don't know i don't know if it's as simple as sort of like you publicly embarrassing maybe the parents or i i have no idea there are no ramifications i think that's it 
Well, don't tell Yeah, but how do you, I've people. always wondered, how do you ban a person? So you're telling me I get banned from Spurs games. I can't somehow get a ticket and go up to the, the 200 section. Who the hell would know? I don't know how you carry out a ban. It sounds great on paper, but like, like out of, you know, 14,000 people, 8,000 people, 60,000 people, whatever, football game, you're going to know everybody that works at the stadium is on high alert for that one face. There's no chance. Like there's no, unless you, you just don't buy it with your credit card, if that's the only way they have of tracking you. And, and then you'd be an idiot to try that anyways. And, but we are talking about idiots. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can reach out to like a team. I would love to. I've always wanted works. to know that because it sounds real good and ooh, got him, but not really. <laughs> like, you just don't sit courtside. Mm-hmm. Although I don't go to things if I can't mm-hmm. sit courtside. So technically, yeah, <laughs> I would be banned. <laughs> but that's totally fair.